What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cheers Shots to the Cranium. I am your host, Stephen Goforth. I have a lot of things bouncing around in my cranium. Right now, a lot of things going on in the world of wrestling, a lot of things going on in the world, period, with this huge coronavirus scare. So I'm going to jump into a lot of topics, hopefully to take your mind off of all this stuff, take my mind off of everything that's going on, have a sense of normalcy with professional wrestling, and I want to hear from all of you guys. Look me up on Instagram and on Twitter. It's Chair, the number two, Cranium, Chair 2 Cranium, on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. Give me some feedback. Ask me some questions. Let me know what you feel about the topics that I'm going to discuss on today's show. Go subscribe to us on all the major platforms. You can listen to this podcast. Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube. You don't want to miss out on all future episodes. And go check out the archives as well. as a lot of past episodes, a lot of past interviews you want to check out, want to listen to. My most recent interview is with WOW Women of Wrestling's Samantha Smart. It was a fantastic interview with Samantha. She tells it like it is, so you don't want to miss this interview. And make sure you're on the lookout for future interviews here on Cheer Shots to the Cranium. So without further ado, let's jump right in to this week's topics. It goes without saying that the biggest news going on right now is the rescheduling or the the movement of WrestleMania from Tampa Stadium, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, over to the Performance Center. Gigantic shakeup. On top of all that, NXT TakeOver has been canceled or postponed. The WWE Hall of Fame has been postponed. WrestleCon, which is a huge event put on down there every year, has been canceled. Hate it for those guys. Michael Bakikio has put on a, a tremendous event with WrestleCon, and I hate that those guys have to cancel that. Michael's a fantastic guy, and uh, hopefully they can recover from this and maybe put on a future show and move forward. It's just a huge adjustment for everybody, and it's it's something that's... Uh, it's scary. This whole this whole uh, pandemic is scary, and, and we don't know what's going to happen. All we can do is just try to take the safest precautions we can and get through this together and unite and become stronger from all this, hopefully. But WrestleMania may not take place in the Performance Center. From what I'm hearing, and again, this is all rumors, ladies and gentlemen. I have not heard any solid facts on this, and I try to just report solid facts. That's what I pride myself on. But it's worth talking about these rumors because what I'm hearing is that they may end up having WrestleMania sometime in early June and it could be in Madison Square Garden. The whole purpose of finding a destination, a new destination for WrestleMania at the Performance Center was because of insurance purposes. Because if they make efforts to get this rescheduled, that insurance can pay out, they can recover from this reschedule, help out Madison Square Garden at the same time as I think an event got canceled or postponed there, and still have WrestleMania in front of a large crowd. So that's kind of what we're hoping for here, what WWE is hoping for in this case. But time will tell. We'll see what happens. I hope that's what happens. I would love to see this thing uh, in front of a live audience, and, and, and Madison Square Garden would be an awesome place for that. So we'll wait and see what happens with this. But WrestleMania... Is it going to be in the Performance Center? Is it not? We shall see. So the empty arenas, uh, that's been weird, right? I mean, I know all of you have watched that. It's like, this is really strange looking at the empty arena, the empty seats behind the, the ring and not hearing a crowd reaction. It's just very creepy. I don't like it, but I at least appreciate the fact that WWE and AEW is trying to put on events for us to get us through this, to get our mind off of this. So thank you very much for continuing to entertain us and help us take our minds off this. This is why I'm doing this podcast. This is why all these other wrestling podcasters are continuing forward and doing their podcast because, you know what, it's it's a sense of normalcy and it uh, helps us to feel a little bit better about what's going on. But I I feel like they could do a little extra with these empty arenas. Maybe they could pump some crowd noise in. Maybe they could put up a, a huge screen there behind the ring and uh, 
we see a fake crowd. I don't know. Something, you know, maybe some graphics on the on the screen. Something besides empty seats. Maybe that's the whole point behind it, that they want people to see empty seats for the dramatic effect of it. But it just, it's too quiet. It's way too quiet in there. It's, you know, put some kind of noise in there. Would love to see some crowd noise pumped in. I don't know. What do you think? Comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Maybe even um, play some old uh, classic matches in between You know that, that filler time they're trying to do. Instead of us watching two hours of the Royal Rumble on Raw, I swear I think it did last two hours, which is crazy. Why not, uh, at least the first two hours of the show, most of it, why not do something different? I mean, I, I don't want to watch the Royal Rumble again. Most of us have already seen the Royal Rumble. If, we're, if we subscribe to WWE Network, those that didn't, you know, it's old news. I know classic matches are old news as well, but how many times do we watch that? How long has it been since we watched something like a classic match? Or maybe it was a match from several years ago that uh, may have some influence on this year's WrestleMania matches. Something. Uh, but just get a little more creative with these empty arena matches. I just feel like, you know what, they could tap into something. What I do love is what NWA did with their program where you saw the interactive uh, audience. that had, had fans at home. They were watching on their computers, and they were interacting with the program. I thought that was awesome. Why not do something like that where maybe some people could get famous for a few minutes and they can see their, their face on television commenting about and reacting to what they're seeing on TV and hearing their opinions about the characters or hearing their opinion about the storylines, whatever. Make it more fan interactive, kind of like how they used to do with uh, fan voting and making that interactive. It's the WWE Universe. Why not get them involved more during a time like this? I don't know. Just an idea. I think that would be really cool if they did something like that. All right. I've got to swing my chair at the Intercontinental Championship. I cannot stand the way this title looks. It is ugly. I'm sorry, people. For all of you that think it looks great, I don't know what you're thinking. This thing is atrocious. I don't know what they were thinking about when they made this. I love the classic style. I think it looks really good. I even like the one that was before they brought back the classic style when Cody Rhodes had the belt. I, I like that one better. Why not bring that one back? Why this one? This thing is ridiculous. But what I will say is I thought it was a great move that they put the IC title on Sami Zayn. I feel like, not to say that Braun Strowman didn't deserve it, not to say that Shinsuke Nakamura didn't do a great job with it. I thought they did. But, man, Sami Zayn is really grabbing my attention and holding it. I mean, he is he's all over the place, right? I mean, that's, that's Sami Zayn. And he knows how to talk. He knows how to act. He knows how to entertain. And he also knows how to wrestle. So Sami Zayn winning the IC title I thought was a pleasant surprise. I did not see that one coming. And that's what we want, right? We want to be surprised. We want to see something different. And I did not expect Sami Zayn to pin Braun Strowman for that IC title. So kudos to the creative team for coming up with that. And um, and kudos to Sami Zayn for being the Intercontinental Championship. I hope he maybe uh, takes away and distracts me a little bit from the ugliness of that title. How about the promos that Asuka and Kairi Sane do? Man, are those hilarious. I mean, we have absolutely no clue what they're saying, right? I mean, but man, am I entertained by that. They get in there and they go crazy and they laugh and they, they, they talk 90 miles an hour and you can't understand a word that's going on there. But guess what? I'm entertained by it and so are you. And if you're willing to admit that or not, whatever. But you know you are. I mean, they're in the ring, and it's like you can't stop watching, and you got to chuckle a little bit at what they're doing. So I'm really like what's going on there. And I really liked Asuka uh, doing play-by-play, doing a commentary uh, on, on Monday Night Raw this past week. I thought she did a wonderful job, and I was laughing my ass off listening to her reacting to that match with Rey Mysterio and Andrade. And every now and again, you can maybe understand what she was saying. But again, I think it's classic stuff. I think it's great. Keep doing it. Speaking of the announcer's table, how about Triple H? Triple H did a great job 
at the commentary table on SmackDown with Michael Cole. Does that mean he had a great reaction from a lot of fans? Does this mean we're going to see more of Triple H at the announce table? I hope so. I would love to see it. I think he added more entertainment to that table and some of his reactions and some of the things he said and did during the show. I loved it. I'd love to see Triple H in an entertaining role. I miss him being on TV. I miss him in storylines. We're, we're going to see him for the first time um, in a long time, not performing at WrestleMania this year. I think it's something that probably needed to happen. Let's give some other people the spotlight. Uh, those that can argue, why is John Cena in there? I get that argument. It's a whole other topic. But Triple H maybe need to take a year off. He's got a lot of uh, responsibilities within the company. I think it's a lot to not only make sure that the show is rolling, but also to prepare for a match and be in shape and all that thing, all these things, it's tough. So, um, but I would love to see. I just love seeing Triple H back in any way, shape, or form, and his personality. I think is great. When will we see the return of Nia Jax? Who knows? I think it's soon, though. Uh, rumblings are saying that it could be really soon. Could it be at WrestleMania? Could she make an appearance and during one of the ladies' matches? I'd love to see that. I miss Nia Jax. I, you know, she's had a long road of recovery from those ACL surgeries, and I think it's close. I'm anxious to see what she looks like when she comes back. I've been hearing that she's going to look different, and I love the way she looked before. But I think that uh, she's going to have a different look about her when she comes in. So we'll see. We'll see what that, how that shapes out. I'm really excited about her return. I think she's going to bring back some uh, spice and some excitement to that women's division. Not to say it wasn't exciting already. It certainly is, but uh, she's a different type of wrestler. She's a different type of character that uh, brings some diversity to that division. I miss that. Cannot wait for the return of Nia Jax. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Speaking of the women's division... The big match at WrestleMania has been confirmed after Elimination Chamber was Shayna Baszler versus Becky Lynch. I don't know about you, but I don't feel as though there's been a big buildup between these two. I mean, we had Shayna jump in the ring and take on this vampire-type character and bit the neck, the back of the neck of Becky Lynch. And we kind of felt like, okay, that's starting something for WrestleMania. And then we throw her into the Elimination Chamber. That uh, To me, I felt like that match was totally pointless other than pointing out how dominant Shayna can be. So that, that message did get across from that match. But clearly, we all knew that Shayna was going to walk out of that thing, the winner, facing Becky at WrestleMania. I just feel like there could be a little more buildup with this. I don't feel like there's been enough. I will say the promo that Becky did on Raw this past week was good. It made me want to see what's going to happen. Seeing Shayna staring at the TV monitor backstage, fuming. Couldn't wait to get her hands on Becky. You know, that's 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 helping the situation. But, you know, I feel like the buildup could be longer. We need to see months of this, not just weeks of this, and make us really anticipate this match. Because you've got two stellar athletes, two stellar performers and wrestlers in the ring together. And this is kind of like one of those dream matches, in, in my opinion. And it would be so much more dramatic if it had more build-up to it. I still think it's going to be a great match, but let's have more build-up next time. The Dark Side of the Ring debuts its second season on March 24th on Vice. If you did not check out Season 1, I mentioned this in some past episodes... You need to do that. There are some wonderful episodes on Dark Side of the Ring that you need to make sure you watch before Season 2. The first episode will talk about the tragic story of Chris Benoit and his family. And um, I've watched the preview for that today, and it looks like it's going to be really good. So Dark Side of the Ring debuting its second season on Vice, March 24th. You don't want to miss it. If you're a wrestling fan, a true wrestling fan, you're really going to enjoy these shows. The Raw episode in the Empty Arena had higher ratings than it's ever had in the last four weeks. Can you believe that? Raw ratings were up in the Empty Arena show. And you know why? Because it was different. People wanted to see something different. 
No fans in the arena? What? I got to check this out. What? How are they going to do that? That needs to be a wake-up call to WWE. WWE can learn from this. What can we do each week that's different, that sets us apart from the previous week? What can we do that's going to make people have to sit down in front of their televisions or in front of their devices and watch this episode of Raw or watch this episode of SmackDown, mainly in this case Raw because ratings have been down pretty good over the last several weeks or months. What can we do different? Let's learn from this. It's an empty arena. Everybody turned in. I'm not saying we need to do another empty arena. I'm just saying let's do something really different that can make people want to watch and really draw them in. So anyway, I just think it's I want I didn't I want I couldn't go without mentioning that because I feel like it's something that maybe WWE can learn from and getting those ratings up each week. As many of you know, Scott Steiner, Big Papa Pump, he collapsed last week on a Friday night show, and uh, it was a very serious situation. I've had the pleasure of being around Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, uh, photographing a lot of his matches, and um, he's, a, he's a great guy. And I, I, I had some great interactions with him, and I was really upset to hear that this had happened to him. Good news is, it looks like he's making a full recovery. He just recently come out with a statement saying that he doesn't remember anything from that night. He doesn't remember walking to the ring. He doesn't remember doing his promo. He doesn't remember walking back to the behind the curtain. And he doesn't even remember anything that happened on Saturday. So that is, that is really scary. I hope that uh, he's on a road to full recovery. And I just want to wish him all the best in that. And... Uh, I hope that this will never happen again to him and that uh, he can continue his career in the ring, entertaining us like he always does. With this recent uh, pandemic of the coronavirus, it certainly has us all scared, has us all worried, has us all concerned. Um, It's affecting a lot of things in this world. Our economy is one of them. Certainly our health is another. Health is most important in anything. Uh, Indie shows in the world of wrestling are are really suffering. A lot of independent shows are having to cancel because, you know, they can't have large crowds there. So think about the indie shows during this time. Think about the uh, employees that cannot get out there and work, not just in wrestling, but other things as well, other professions. Support your local indie wrestling. They need your support now more than any time ever, as far as I'm concerned. When this whole thing blows over, hopefully it will soon, that we can get back to some normalcy. The independent shows can start running. Go support them. Pack those arenas. Pack those gymnasiums, wherever they're doing it. Support local independent wrestling. They need you more than ever after all of this. One in particular that I was going to be helping out uh, in April was Super Star Wars Wrestling. And they had a great card lined up. They had Shane Douglas on there. They got the Barbarian. They had Arn Anderson. They had Lodi. They had Nikita Koloff with the Koloff family tag team. They had Dr. Tom Pritchard and George South. Man, this this card was loaded. The Rock and Roll Express, you name it. Some great stars are going to be on this show. They're working on postponing that and coming up with a new date. So make sure you check them out at Super Star Wars Wrestling. Go check out their Facebook page. Go check out their website, superstarwarswrestling.com. It's a great independent organization. You won't be disappointed in that. Let me tell you something I'm really excited about, and that is the Exalted One storyline that AEW is doing right now. Who the heck is this guy? Who is it? Man, I'm absolutely loving the build-up. You heard me talking about the the lack of build-up with Becky Lynch and and, uh, Shayna Baszler. AEW is nailing it with this thing. I mean, who is this guy? Theories out there could be Raven. Could it be Matt Hardy coming in from WWE? But man, what a great build-up this is. Congratulations to AEW for getting this thing right. They know how to tell a story. They just they know how to build up to a match. Look how great of a job they did with Cody and MJF. Look how great they did when Cody and Dustin went at it in that first uh, pay-per-view match. And how they have built this storyline between John Moxley 
and Chris Jericho, and it paying off with Moxley capturing the AEW world title. I just absolutely love the job that AEW does with their storylines and how they develop their wrestlers in that organization. If you've been hiding under a rock and you've not watched AEW, climb out from underneath that rock, expand your horizons, and watch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday night. Check out their pay-per-views. Uh, it's something totally different, and it's something you, you will not be disappointed in. Congratulations so far on all the success that AEW has been experiencing. That does it. I'm done. I'm done swinging my chair. I'm done uh, dumping all this stuff out of my cranium. I think that's uh, it's been tremendous therapy for me. Thank you for taking the time to listen. It's gotten my mind off everything that's going on in this world. I just want to tell all of you to be safe out there. Be safe and just do the best you can to protect yourselves, protect your loved ones, and we'll get through this. Yeah, we'll, like I said, we'll unite. We'll get through this, and we'll become stronger from this. We'll learn from this, hopefully, and um, let's all come together, right? We, it, it, sometimes it's times like these that bring us closer together, make us appreciate things a little bit more, some things we may have taken for granted. You know, little things like going out and eating in public, going to a movie theater, being around crowds of people, things that, you know what, it's just part of life, and all of a sudden that's been taken away from us. And uh, maybe we appreciate that a little bit more. Maybe that when we go out into the world again, into large crowds, that you know what, maybe we'll be a little more kinder to each other. At least that's my hope. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thank you for pushing that play button no matter where you are. And thank you for taking another cheer shot to the cranium. <laughs>